I fell in love with cinema uh, very early on, but I didn't start studying it until much later, halfway through university. Um, I was studying to become a doctor and found I was not good at memorizing things. So uh, my roommate was studying film and I thought, why not? And I tried it and I just fell in love with it all over again. And uh, I went to Yale for university, but they didn't, they, they have a very good film program, but there wasn't much production. So uh, I really didn't get experience until I went to Los Angeles and studied at USC Film School after that, where I made a few shorts and was very lucky uh, upon graduating from USC about a year in, uh, a year after graduating, I sold my first screenplay for my first film. And uh, so I, I was lucky to get an early start in that regard. So um, my, my film was called Safe Neighborhood and it, uh, it follows a 12 year old boy who has a really big crush on his babysitter and he's just found out that his babysitter is moving next week and so he's telling his best friend tonight is my last chance to have sex with my babysitter <laughs> and he 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 tries to do all the right things he orders her favorite pizza he puts on a scary movie because he hears that gets girls more excited he he lights candles for her and right when he goes in for the kiss a home invasion starts and she's trying to hide him in the closet and he's pulling on her saying, let go of me, let me prove to you that I'm a man. And uh, things, things go downhill from there. <laughs> um, the, the reason I made this film was I'm a really big fan of John Hughes films uh, from the 80s. And I've always loved the idea of doing a John Hughes movie like Breakfast Club or Home Alone or Sixteen Candles and uh, the awkwardness of being a teenager in love and then interrupting it with a horror film. So that's kind of where that started. I'm an American, I live in the US, but I, we shot in Australia because uh, a, a company called Storm Vision got a hold of the screenplay and uh, we were about to make the film in the US, in, in South Carolina for you know, a, a rather modest budget. But this Australian company said, hey, if you shoot this in Australia, we can make it for more than that. So that's, that's how we started shooting there. We shot in the dead of summer there. It was really hot. It was like 40 degrees Celsius a lot of the days. And we were trying to film a, a movie that takes place during Christmas. Uh, and so everyone was wearing coats and just sweating their balls off and, uh, and <laughs> try, trying to look cold. Uh, and, and usually succeeding. It's funny, a lot of the actors, I, I offered them um, Ziploc bags with ice to put down their backs or put in their jackets, and they said, no, no, we're fine, we're actors. And uh, I, was, I was very impressed with their professionalism because I could see them just, I could see the steam coming out of their collars. Um, and yeah, so we shot in Australia, uh, and we shot for one day in the U.S. just for the beginning of the film, which has a lot of snowy exteriors, but everything else in the film, the backyard, the snowy backyard, the house, was all built on a set in Sydney. I started with looking for the babysitter for Ashley, and um, I, I happened upon Olivia de Jong, who um, a lot of people at the time didn't know, but she was about to star in M. Night Shyamalan's movie, The Visit, um, with Ed Oxenbold, who I ended up also casting uh, in Safe Neighborhood as the best friend. A lot of people ask me, did you mean to cast both brother and sister from The Visit, M. Night Shyamalan's movie? And I said, I think the bigger coincidence is M. Night Shyamalan cast two Australians to play two Americans in, in that film, because to me, uh, it wasn't a coincidence at all that I cast them. They're, they're two of the best teenage actors in Australia right now. Um, and Levi Miller being the third. I, I probably read about 200 boys. I don't have the exact number, but we, we read a ton of boys in the US. We read a lot of uh, boys in Australia, uh, all, all parts of Australia, all parts of the US. And Levi and Ed were by far the best. And uh, it was scary. Even during the audition, I remember getting goosebumps watching Levi uh, kind of play some of his 
more difficult scenes in the film. And he, he knows how to go there. And it was fun because all of his other films, especially in Pan, um, you know, he plays the really, the awe-stricken boy. And he's always like nice and sweet and charming. And I, it was fun to show other sides of him in Safe Neighborhood because he has an incredible uh, range of talent. Ed um, is such a warm person and he's so funny and he was one of the best parts of, uh, to me, he was one of the secret sauces of what made Safe Neighborhood so fun because he's, uh, he ends up kind of being the window that you watch the film through. Um, and then Olivia, who I cast from the very beginning, um, she's, she's incredible. And it was really fun casting her because I feel like in The Visit, she, she still kind of looked a bit like a teenager. And in Safe Neighborhood, I, I felt like she was beginning to kind of come into her own as an adult. Kind of like, uh, it, it, it feels like her first film where she's beginning to become a woman. And it felt like a right time because the movie is about growing up and coming of age. And so with Levi and, and Ed, their voices cracking all the time, going <laughs> with their voices, and with Olivia having just become, uh, you know, she, the first film where she looks like an adult, it felt right for the themes of the film. I think for every movie I do, I, I have different directors that I'm influenced by. For this one, um, very much John Hughes, Wes Craven, and Quentin Tarantino. I felt like a mix of those. Um, but like on my next movie, um, I'm really, uh, I think I'm really enjoying the idea of mixing um, James Wan with kind of like Amblin, like Amblin 80s horror, like Poltergeist. So uh, I, I have so many favorite directors that there's, there's no one or two that influence my whole career. It's more like for each project what feels right. You know, I think there's a lot of similarities between Fantastic Fest in Austin and here at Torino Film Festival because, um, you know, a lot of festivals can be about the journalists or be about the critics um, or be about the awards. And I feel like Fantastic Fest and Torino Film Festival are similar in that it feels like it's, they're both festivals for the fans. I just see a lot of people coming who really love movies and uh, you know after each screening I, I love seeing everyone you know crowd out onto the street and start talking about the movie afterwards and that's not something that you usually see at festivals at least to the ones I've been to so um, yeah I, I, and I think that's my favorite thing about festivals is just kind of seeing people who love movies watching films and, and being in wanting to like it because uh, usually when people watch films, they're a little more critical. But at a film festival, they've come out and they're, they're wanting to, to enjoy your film. So, so far, we've gotten some really great responses to Safe Neighborhood. So, by the way, just so you, you, you know why we're not being very specific about the film, um, about 30 minutes into the story, it becomes a very different film. It, it kind of takes a really hard twist. So, you know how I was talking about that home invasion and, and Luke trying to impress his babysitter, about 30 minutes into the movie it becomes something else and no one, we're not talking about it. So if that's frustrating for you, then go watch the movie. <laughs> um, trying to think of another, oh, so here's something that I can't, I, I won't spoil. Um, the, the, pe the two people who played the, the Luke's parents in the film are Virginia Madsen and Patrick Warburton and they're the only two Americans in the film. Everyone else was Australian. Um, and I remember talking to Patrick on the phone and he was saying, listen, I'm, you know, I, I really like this script. I'm, I'm interested. Is it okay if I bring some of my own things and bring them into the movie? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I just have these Christmas ornaments that I really want to show in the film. So I, we left it at that and he arrived in Sydney a few weeks later and he brings me this giant wooden box and inside of it are like uh, ruby red slippers and like Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind and Marilyn Monroe and 
and he was like, so I want to I wanna talk about my gay Christmas ornaments. And I was like, what? And he took me through this idea for a scene where he's, he's like telling his wife, like, I noticed that my Christmas ornaments aren't on the Christmas tree. And she's like, no, of course they're not on the Christmas tree. And he said, there's nothing wrong with me liking gay things. And it was just the most, it, it, it did not seem like a good idea at the time. But then when they started taking me through the, the improvising of it, we were laughing so hard and we ended up keeping it in the film. It was great. It was a great way to introduce the parents. So uh, <laughs> if you're like, where did you come up with that? The, I'd love to say I came up with it, but the truth is Patrick Warburton and, and, and his genius and his real gay Christmas ornaments uh, all made it into the film. If I had to describe my movie in three words, I would say, um, One, it is subversive because uh, I, I feel like home invasion, the home invasion genre has been done a lot recently and it's become very formulaic and it's become very repetitive. So uh, my hope was to do a home invasion movie that shocked the heck out of people. Um, two, I think it's satisfying because uh, a lot of movies that do pretty well in the middle don't know how to stick the landing and I would like to think that that's the best part of our film is the end of the film. And enjoyable. Uh, it's a horror movie. It goes into some really dark areas. It goes into some taboo areas and um, just when it threatens to go too far, uh, it makes you laugh. It makes you have fun. And then later it makes you feel really guilty for having laughed. <laughs> So there we go, those are my three words.